Hey viewers, welcome, Peter here, University of Nairobi, Faculty of Law, Kisum Campus, Social Jurisprudence. Today's topic, however, is on the theory of justice according to Professor John Rawls. Professor John Rawls was born in 1921 and he died in the year 2002. He was born in Baltimore, the Maryland in the United States of America, and uh, he was born during a very difficult moment in time in which there was economic depression known as historic Great Depression that the world back then had experienced, especially in the Western economies. John Rawls indeed might have had an experience of a society full of inequalities, iniquities, and some level of socio-economic injustice. His publication entitled A Theory of Justice back in 1971 is quite telling. Without reading too much into it, I would like to speak about the backdrop under which John Rawls grew up and developed his theory of justice and what might have influenced his thoughts by that time. John Rawls' time was the time of legal positivism in which the law was distinguished from morality and the understanding of law was indeed very empirical in its approach and methods. The year between 1961 and 1971 was again inculcated by the utilitarian political philosophy that emerged sometime in the United Kingdom by Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. Utilitarianism is all about the principle of utility, the maximization of utility, and this is coming from the consequentialism. The end justifies the means, and in whichever way one would like to look at this is that utilitarianism has been embraced as one of the great political theories that has defined the mindset of many politicians, especially in the liberal democracies and, quote by quote, the United States of America, in which John Rawls developed his contribution to the social just, uh, uh, jurisprudence um, and developed his a theory of justice of which we are going to converse around. I think it is quite fair and right to look at John Rawls as one of the greatest legal philosophers and political minds of our contemporary time and uh, many authors, scholars, researchers, academics, professionals, mm -hmm. jurists have made ample reference and have cited the work of John Rawls, especially the theory of justice as approached by John Rawls. Looking at the distributive justice, looking at utilitarianism and the way wealth is divided within the, or among the members of a given community, a given society, 
shall be dictated by so many things and Rawls is also admitting the aspect of the moral contrasts that some members of the society may not be as equal as other members. Some members of the society may not be as lucky as other members. There are differences, there are diversities, and such diversities may range from the gender differences, sex orientations or sexual orientations. We talk of races, we talk of ethnic groups, communities, our economic lifestyle, the pastoralists, the farmers, uh, the professionals, the business people, the traders, and we all belong to different categories, even in terms of faith, in terms of creed, religion. And the Hindu may have their comprehensive doctrine based on the guitar. The Christians may have the same based on the Bible, whereas the Muslims may have the same based on Quran. The Jewish people may have the same doctrine based on the Torah. And this gives the society a certain understanding of the basic structure of the society, which must be defined by such comprehensive kind of doctrines that explain to people what would be the justice for them. Rawls avoids the pitfalls of being abstract or being too idealistic and ideological, and Rawls seeks to engage with the socio-economic reality of the people, starting from what is witnessed and what is evidenced in terms of social status, social classes, the salary and remuneration standards or groups. People are different in various ways in the society. As Rawls puts it, and in order to do this, he looks at the following principles. First, the liberalism, because remember, the liberal democracy and the progressive development of politics in the United States of America. Then he looks at the principle of equality, which of course to him is predicated on a liberal society, on the concept of political liberalism. But with a lot of problems and difficulties that this one brings to the argument, Rawls sees the differences as a principle that should gear the thinkers towards a level of consensus because there will be multiple and convergent kind of principles within such a multicultural, multiracial, multireligious, and also multi-ideological society as such of ours in the modern time. Comparing and contrasting the world of roles and our world today, the Kenya today, the society of the modern man, our contemporary reality, we find a lot of relevance and consistency. But roles with such kind of inequality and inequity, notwithstanding in his society, looks at a society backed by principles as the basic structure of the society that defines its comprehensive doctrine. Rawls admitted also in the publication that utilitarian maxim of maximizing the profitability and believing in the greater happiness for the greater number 
might not be the case in order to look at justice. Justice, however, should be anchored on that political liberalism in which the politicians and political ideologies aim at liberating the people when it comes to their choices of what they want to be, the job they want to have, civil rights, social rights, and whom they want to marry, for instance. And in, for, in order for this to happen, Rawls is more concerned with distributive justice in which how are wealth and natural resources distributed in any given particular society of concern. In order to do this, Rawls looks at the moral contrast. He looks rather at the personal, our natural reality in which individuals are self-centered and each individual would always think of himself or herself when it comes to the sharing of the national cake. If given the liberty as believed and argued, then an individual would grab as much wealth and as much resources as possible for himself, his family, his proxies, and his community, his clan, or the members of his ethnic group. But Rawls, geniusly, in a tremendous kind of evaluation and assessment of the reality, comes up with the original position. In order to do this, let's look at the original position. We go back to, let us say, the pre-societal reality. There is no society, for instance, and you are given the options, and you are to choose which society you want to belong to, what gender, what sexual orientation, whom would you like to marry, what race would you like to be born into, what kind of family status would you like to be born into, Maybe a wealthy family, perhaps. Maybe a noble family, perhaps. A royal family or a monarch, a monarchical system. Or you'd like to be born into an average family, a simple family. A family that is considered to be poor or a family of hustlers. Those who struggle to strike a balance and have the bread on table. And... You can choose what religion to belong to, uh, of your preference, and uh, how you want to live. Given this original position, we must get into the principle known as the veil of ignorance. The adopting ve the veil of ignorance means that we assume that we are ignorant about what that society is going to be after. And we will be making our choices being blindfolded. And we have got no clue whatsoever of what each one of us is going to be in that material society and what that person is going to become. In that kind of ignorance, one would likely and naturally tend to apportion the resources in an equal measure and this is egalitarian approach and that would really be healthy then that means in disregard of your status your area of belonging or where you happen to be in this new society you will have to accept that particular portion that has been equally shared. But Rawls also had to battle with a serious conceptual problem. That's the problem of equality, because equality is predicated on liberty in this sense might not really 
at the end of the day be the egalitarian equality because given the differences. So the principle of differences brings us to the question of a myriad of other principles that may be multiple and may be also convergent. So to deal with these principles that are so many and variant, divided, and people are to make cho choices based on their personal liberty and group liberties, it may not be indeed very realistic and practical. This notwithstanding, Rawls proposes consensus in these principles that the basic structure of a society having such kind of comprehensive doctrines that may not also be the clue and the conclusion may require a certain of consensus system in which people consciously can make informed choices of certain categories. This indeed brought a lot of questions than answers, which of course Rawls or Professor Rawls in this case explains in his other publication of 1975 entitled Justice as Fairness. Justice as Fairness is trying to deal with the gap created by his previous publication when it comes to how the resources ought to be distributed among individuals taking care of individual contribution into the collectiveness, the society. For instance, I give you a team. In this team, you have players and one player is B. Player B is known to be a winner, a scorer, and whenever he plays, having that kind of popularity, many people would buy the ticket and the team, the organization, would make a lot of profit, a lot of income. When it comes to how to pay the players or how to share the resources of the organization, one must also take into account the contribution of an individual to the collectiveness. And in that case, player B, having the popularity and having such success, full story, and having that kind of talent for the team is making a bigger contribution to the profit of the team as compared to other players who are also are equally claimers of equal distribution of wealth. This is where we get into trouble. But the solution to this trouble, according to John Rawls, is the fairness. The principle of fairness means that we must treat an individual also caring about the value and the worth of that individual. We are all equal and we are all sharing the same worth as humans, but our contributions are never equal. So those who bring more shall or more shall be given. This is also in the Bible. Those who have made profitable use of their talents, more will be added on top of what they were given originally. But those who have not made a lot of contribution will also be treated with certain discretion according to what they were managing to contribute. In this case, the Bible has it in the gospel. But Rawls turns this around to develop his political and legal philosophy that dwells around the political justice and the understanding of morality and justice and also the law. Rawls carefully 
sees this as justice, as fairness, in which the players should not raise certain complaints related to egalitarianism or equality such as one is equal to one, but would also be mindful about the individual contribution, what an individual brings or pumps into that collectiveness, into the society. That also would be justice for the player because without which it would be tantamount to injustice and purporting that every player ought to be paid equally whereas their contributions to that outcome is not equal. This is how I look at Professor John Rawls from the Harvard University in the United States of America. Rawls is one of our contemporary and the 21st century great legal thinkers, political minds, and those who can educate us, can take us through and can school us about a theory of justice in the modern liberal understanding. And in his liberal justice, we find a lot of criticism and certain critiques have been again critiqued. And this is what will lead us to the reading of Professor Ronald Dworkin from the same state and from the same university and his thinking will also be indeed very important and very interesting. I want to preempt. You better subscribe to this YouTube channel and also press the bell to be given or to be sent signals and notifications every time a new video is being projected. I invite you to get a copy of this publication of Professor John Rawls, a well-read and widely discussed book, A Theory of Justice, very important and critical for both political and legal professionals and philosophers and those who are interested in advancing a theory of justice. Thank you so much for watching and I want to thank the subscribers and those who promote this channel and the productions that we are putting and availing out there for free in advancement of the global knowledge around law and justice. Bye for now and I expect to see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you.